Hello, welcome to Mark Langley's Horsemanship Podcast, a podcast helping people to understand their horses better, to provide solutions in a calm, connected way. I'm Jenny Barnes. And I'm Mark Langley. Mark, I've got some writing questions for you today. The first one is from Viv. Viv is having difficulties getting her standard bred to canter. When they're out on the trail, if there's another horse in front of him, he'll canter. But if they're in front, there's no way he will. If we're next to a horse that canters, then he'll trot at an amazing speed, but he won't pop into that canter. Any way that she can rectify this? Enjoy trotting, Viv. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it, you're not worried about canter and that, no. But no, you can rectify it a little by the sounds of it. Um, most horses, you know, especially a horse of race based like yours. So I'm guessing side by side racing, he gets back in a racing mind and stays in his gate and says, I'm not supposed to can taught. I'm not supposed to can because that's something that they're not allowed to do, um, you know, in, 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 the, in the trotting or the pacing. So there's obviously something in his mind that puts him in a race mentality and trail riding is going to put like, you know, everybody's going up a hill and, and, and up a track and it's going together it's going to be more like a race mentality to him than when you're just working him on his own so uh and there's certain situations there that will cause him um want to stay i can't remember sorry if you said the trot or the pace but but anyway we'll, for, for now we'll say the trot uh, so if the the, the 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 going out on his own at the canter well that's really because not only is he saying in his mind I am not allowed to canter he's wow look at all that stuff up there that I'm not brave enough to lead through so you've got like a restriction of um like I call it processing speed so um you know if we as people go into a new environment we sometimes are a little more careful as we walk through the new environment slower and more carefully being aware of all the things like say people who are a little bit arachnophobic, you can imagine them walking through a bit of a jungle situation where there's like spider webs and creepy crawlies in the trees. They're going to be going, Oh, really careful. And they're not going to rush because they're going to think they're going to get spider webs all over them. And, 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 and I, I, I sort of see that situation in horses a lot. Their processing speed, for leading in new environments, especially when they're under the so that that are still carrying a rider and, and carrying the pressure of riders and being on another ride, which also puts worry in their cup. Um, they've got a process. But the cantering out in front is something maybe maybe you're not going to get on a trail ride for a little while. Um, that's something that, that I work on by teaching him to maybe do little trail rides just with you where he learns to lead the trail more often uh, ahead and process new environments more confidently until he becomes a bit more of a leader, uh, as in he's thinking more about the environment and starting to carry it forward and get out the front and just going getting overwhelmed. So I would I would start to ride him out and I wouldn't worry about the canter until he's carrying it nice, you know, interested forward thoughts through it. And, and that would be, be done maybe on you know, a little bit more on your own or just with a few friends that are happy to sort of go along and you encourage him to lead a little more and learn to lead at a walk and a, and, a, and a slow trot for a while until he's very confident with that. And then maybe one day he'll, he'll be confident to sort of canter out in the lead. So that, that, that's going to be on that one. Um, regarding just cantering at all, you know, whether he's beside a horse or following a horse, um, still sort of like he might have to lead so he's gonna not not just canter off but you have to go back and teach him how to canter too you have to get a really nice canter hey if i was to sort of you know use my gut i'd probably say i'd say you're riding him and i think sometimes even i mean a, in a sort of a fairly neutral environment where you've cantered him um sometimes you're still thinking is he going to canter is he not going to canter i don't don't, I would I would doubt that you know that, right, I ask for canter, he gives me canter every time softly from a walk, from a jog, you know, 
you know, I, um, so I stay, he stays not at that stage. So the things with, with, with any ones like standees that have been raced in harness, a lot of, a lot of nice turnings, really good to get them sort of following the feel of a rain with a bend, it's a big diff. They just get in this stiff mechanical sort of gait. So that sort of stuff's really good to get them to sort of get back to the normal gates and, and getting them close to the... The other thing, um, if you look at an am, if you look at a walk, a walk can turn into like an ambly, a, a, an ambly type of walk, and then all of a sudden a walk can suddenly turn a two-beat rhythm, which becomes a pace for some paces. So for paces, um, you've got to be careful how fast you walk them before you pace at a trot you you don't let them walk too fast before they trot because sometimes they start to 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 to, to get uh turn from a four bit walk into a two all of a sudden it's a walking pace um into into a fast into into a racing pace um but you i'm good acceleration as well so you can squeeze him and he's going zoom and and i would actually start to see if i can get him to sort of go from walk and squeeze is that weird? Um, trot completely. That's something I would be aiming for in a safe environment. So he's very comfortable at going, I can squeeze up and avoid that pace that trot or pace gets, uh, either or either, uh, depending on, on, on what they are, what they've raced in. Um, you want to avoid that fast speed trot and that fast speed pace. So um, you, you, you sort of want to and walked canner um if you could if you could get that that'd be really good and that's just slow down speed up in the walk slow down speed up in the walk so he's getting really really and then you might just say now let's just quickly canner and try and get that in him so he knows he can bypass all that and go straight to canner a little sooner do be careful on listening to this you know if your horse is hotting up don't keep doing what i've just said you know you might have to sort of think a little longer and maybe do a lot more um you know, positions for longer before you start to do that. So, say your horse is softer to the legs, but you've got to really work on those legs just being really soft and easy to sort of up and go. But if you just try that for a bit, Viv, you know, firstly the confidence thing and him leading out in his mind more confidently, and then and then just more sort of training in an off trail environment where he knows that, or well, you know, I asked for canna, and he, and 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 he knows, oh, she's asked for canna, I'll give the canna, and almost giving you that 100% uh, you know right answer okay thanks Mark and Lynn has got a lovely 10 year old gelding he doesn't have a lot of education um, and he's not very forward he is dull to the leg aids um, but she's struggling to get canter on the left lead any advice with that one well I think I think the problems you know but you've already sort of mentioned that he's dull so he doesn't have a lot of confidence so i'm going to let everybody think about this one and this is a very common thing and, and let's tell people to go down the road with canter transitions about push his hip over this way make sure he's bent like this and he has to strike a canter because mechanically he's up to canter that way i don't i don't go down that road with young horses and and because i see too many uh, emotions Thought process issues that hinder a horse's ability to canter on the left lead or the right lead. So basically, what we're trying to do to um, firstly address how good he is to the legs. That you have to address without going to canter. You have to do a lot of leg transitions. The, the other thing, don't and but but also hang on. I'm going to contradict, not contradict myself. Um, I'll say to someone, ride and fix your accelerator. So one day we might be working on acceleration where we're sort of saying slow down, squeeze up, slow down, squeeze up. But acceleration, I never go faster than the horse's processing speed. So to find out your horse's processing speed in that particular environment, which may be enough, for instance, to start with, is you just let your horse walk around. Every time he stops, you take a feel of a rein, you, you hold the rein till he starts moving again or this is every time he stops you put legs on ask them to go again until the horse knows that it can't stop or it's not supposed to stop and then it'll start 
have the possibility to walk, I'll keep walking. So it'll keep walking and then it'll offer you its speed. And don't make it go in any direction, particularly that you want. Walk and you'll find it sucking back over here and then you can take a rein and say, let go of that. Until it can walk itself in every direction, its speed. And over it, by, by doing that experiment, um, what will happen is your horse will start to walk in all directions and they'll start to walk a little faster. And then they start to flick their ears and think forward because you're not on them pushing, 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 steering, pushing all the time, interrupting. You're just letting them go. If they stop, you say go. If they turn off with a strong thought, you say let go of that, maybe turn over here. But you don't say turn and go in my direct, go new direction. And then they just start to go in every direction nice and easily. And once they've done that, then you can start to say, now you can, you're confident at thinking forward in this environment, I'm going to slow you down to the slowest walk till the horse nearly stalls. Uh, I call it, you know, nearly stall your horse. I say, get stalling. And stalling means it's just about to sort of stop from a walk and then say, leg it up to the walk that it was offering you when it was happily and confident in that environment. So, um, then you would keep repeating that until you have a really nice, strong accelerator, quite bright from the slow, nearly stalling speed to the horse's confidence speed. It usually happens that the horse will give you more confidence speed after that. Um, but so, so you don't make a horse go faster than it's capable of, but you say, I would like very quickly from slow to what you are capable of to get the accelerator really, really working really well. So once you've got that established, your acceleration is working better, your horse is confident. And then you work on, can you do the walk trot? So if the horse starts to offer you trot, you can get a walk trot, stand trot, and get nice quick accelerations when the horse gets nice and strong. And then you will start to go back to try and canter, where you can say walk canter. Um, because when they, you try to make them go faster than their processing speed, all the worry is getting tipped in. And what happens if you're putting all that worry in and asking them to go, then 90% of the time the horse will always go to its confident focus eye and it will be thinking through its more confident or destinating through its more confident eye and they'll always strike the same lead, which is the lead that's on the side that their most confident window eyes. So that's why you have to get them pretty soft and, 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 and not worried about the legs and not worried about the environment before you start to think about what lead. You, basically what happens is you're picking up a left rein and going off to the left and you ask for can, the horse is going left, it thinks left, it can is left. If it's thinking right, it can is right. That's uh, where we get them to sort of start to strike a can lead that we've asked for because they're thinking in that direction through the inside rein because you've taught them to steer very well. They're comfortable with can uh, or, or moving forward with the leg into canner so they, they don't worry about that and they don't suddenly panic and go, I've got to run through my dominant eye. So then they'll start to strike. There is a lot of going back to foundation before you go to canner. If you just go, oh, I'm just going to shape the horse up like this and bend it like this and push it, you might you might get a can of transition, but long run you you know you, you know, the shelf life of the horse is not going to be long because it, it'll just be kind of you know more stress faster than the processing speed. So Mark, you've just kind of uh, squashed what most people do out there. You're saying you can get you can pick any counter lead just by asking a horse to go in that direction, knowing it's going to go in that direction. It's got nothing to do with where you put yeah. your legs. Got no. Nothing with your legs, it's where you put the horse's thoughts. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a horse will canter, lead in the direction that it wants to go. That's the most common. Sometimes I, 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 I um, you know, when I was training a lot of young horses and, and, and I had to get them cantering on both leads in a shorter amount of time that you'd like to if you were just um, taking on a horse that, that you bred yourself and you were just riding each day. So, so I would just make sure that uh, I'd have... I, yeah, if I wanted to left canter lead, I'd pick this, the horse's slightly chosen direction and I'd ask the canter then. Uh, so when the horse is already 
pretty chill. Had a, a, a you know, it had a desire to go that way. So I just I only ever asked for canner. I'd set the horse's desire up to be going in a certain direction. Then I'd ask for canner, knowing that it's. Mm. Very good. Okay, well, staying with the with the riding horses and getting them to go where you want them to go. Wendy has got a horse. She um you said she sent in a video of her Brumby, her wild horse Wilbur, and did a video review of it. She said it was really helpful. Thank you so much. She's been working a lot on unlocking him in the reins and steering with him and stopping, and um, it's all going really well. But in the last couple of weeks, though, two horses have now um, been attached to the yard. I think there's a, a yard that comes off the arena. And Wilbur, her horse, is completely drawn to them, especially one of the mares. He ends up planting himself right next to them, and she's unable to move him away unless she dismounts and walks him to the other side of the arena. Uh, eventually they end up back down there again she's tried using the rein holding it really high and just waiting for him to move but he shuffles around one step and won't move again um, she's just wondering if she should give up the fight and just maybe avoid the arena she could go out in the paddock uh, out the front and she could do little rides in there but she's noticed that he is quite worried there and he did have a lot of a bit of a panic the other day so if, he, if she does go out there should she maybe do some long reining and walking in hand to try and build up his confidence first um so it was okay to sort of break wilbur's thought when when uh before but now there's a real reason for him to want to put his thoughts stronger that's all you know it's really what's happened he's gone oh, i really like that horse and 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 he always had a strong thought you can see what the video that i watched that, that i helped you with um, you know, he had strong thoughts and he had a strong desire to be with his herd because he is a Brumby and, um, you know, they're, they're a very strong, you know, herd horse. Um, and so, you know, like all horses are herd horses, but, but you know, some Brumbies I've found have, have a very strong homing. But they're, they're like got a, got a dove based, or is it a pigeon? Dove both homing pigeon. Pigeon. Pigeons. Pigeon, yeah, they've got a homing pigeon find all the time. And it's constantly, you know, uh, that little bird of their mind is more of a, you know, so I think Harry Whitney talks about the little bird that's flying over their heads. That's like a horse's thoughts. And, and if that little bird starts to fly the coop, then it's your job to sort of say, hey, little bird, come back. Um, but I think I think some homing pigeon is their little bird and just goes, <laughs> off it goes. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so... Um, there's a few things you can try. Don't, don't, I think, I think your suggestion of riding in a different area is a good suggestion as long as it's not an area that's too stressful or too frightening and, and unsafe. So you could sort of split the difference, you know, so you could just ride maybe 200 metres away. Uh, so he's not closely attached to that horse and there'll be a general direction and a magnetism that then you can still work with the reins, but it won't be uh, him looking at two horses standing still, like they're resting in a herd and him going, I need to be there standing there. You could um, maybe work him a little bit away using the same principles that I showed you of uh, using the reins to get him to let go of those strong thoughts. have to try and push him where you want him to go and try that. Um, the other thing is if you are close to him and he's sticking to that horse quite a lot, you could just start to be a little bit more clearer at the let go. So try a few other things. The things that I'd try is if you get stuck, just, you know, I, I call it the two second rule. I don't want the horse's feet still for more than two seconds. So basically if he's sort of playing, if that one rein and holding him is not doing anything, then just back him up for a while, teach him how to back up. Don't worry about and, and this is the other thing. It's your mindset. Is, is so, I see people start to doubt their, their, their horse's next decision and start to get a little bit low during a lesson. I see them rise and fall the time um, as they get a bit of a high as the horse does something and then all of a sudden the horse doesn't do something, they get a bit of a low. And I say to them, you're in the future. You're worried about the horse that you want your horse to do. So if your horse is really stuck with another horse, 
don't think about I want the horse to leave this other horse. Don't think about that at all. Go, oh, geez, I'd like this horse to back up a little softer. Geez, got a heavy step right there. I might have to work on that. So I'm going to work it and just get, oh, thanks for the soft step. Good. Now, what can I work on now? Okay, oh, geez, you're heavy in that rain. I might just hold it in a way that gets you to take a step lightly and hone in on the individual questions that you're asking, not the future that you want your horse to be in, which is leaving that horse. And then you'll hone more in on the individuals of the braces that he's offering you when he's stuck at that other horse. And, and, and as I said, be a bit more creative. Um, maybe throw a back up in there, maybe a high quarter in rain and say, I want you to release that hind quarter and move your hind quarter. Thank you. And then you just keep him in there saying, well, we don't have two seconds to hold your feet still. So working on soft back step or maybe a soft side, a soft hind quarter yield. Um, and I'm not trying to say make life hard there and easy somewhere else. You're not you're just saying, I'm only working on these things that, um, that we need to fix. And then all of a sudden he'll let go brace and that stuckness that's in his body and mind and he'll offer you some soft movements and when he does soon enough you might be leading him off in that new direction and taking him but you could maybe do that at a bit of a distance like 100 or 2 meters 100 or 2 200 meters away that may be just enough to help him not have that sticky feeling so it's only half sticky um and then and then you might have a better response until more and more he starts to follow your feel opposed to get stuck there because you know the path of most resistance was when he was stuck there not the path of least resistance so he'll start to figure it out but yeah try and just just put that in there and okay thanks mark and next question is from sarah she has a seven-year-old gelding who's a really sweet and willing horse um he hasn't however um despite all the riding training that he's had so um, he can do sliding stops, side passes. He can twist his head sideways and almost past your leg. He will do whatever he's asked to do, but doesn't have a solid foundation training and she feels doesn't really understand the reins at all. So she wants to start all over again with him and has been watching your videos on anxious horses. She's wondering, should she start concentrating on the beginner level groundwork for the next few weeks and not ride him? Or should she just combine the round work sorry, the groundwork with short rides in the round yard to introduce the introduction reining exercises that you do. Um, she's bringing him to the Perth Clinic later this year in July. Yes. Okay. Um, sounds like most common Western trained horses that I meet these days, and I'm not having a go at Western training or people who want to do Western riding or reining or anything like that. There is a sort of common thing in that sort of style of riding that yield off legs, bend to reins, yield off legs, bend to reins, and it's just move It's a move off pressure, move away from pressure, move away from pressure, and, and, and not a lot of focus on move towards your thoughts and feel good about the movement and what you're doing. So horses get stuck and they do carry anxiety for a long time, though they're trying to be very obedient. They're actually constantly not a able their own anxiety out because they're constantly thinking about the pressure that they've got to move off opposed to even what they're doing and the environment that they're in so so it is hard for them and the, the unfortunate thing is like I, I know this sounds a bit like odd but I've had ex-race horses that, that are easy to get back in balance and sometimes an, an ex-performance horse has done that's, that's competed in in competition and done okay in it or uh, sense that it got it got prizes and and um, you know won competitions because one horse was still leaning on the pressure and still fighting, one was so obedient that it didn't want to make a mistake, so it tried so hard to avoid pressure, so it wouldn't get. So the horse that was still leaning was still going. Oh, I don't understand this, but the other one was going. I understand this. And if you change things, it's a little harder for them to come out of that. It takes a little longer. So you're right in thinking that maybe you should go back to some groundwork because some of them you have to do lots of different little exercises in, in your leading on the group that help them balance again. So, you know, little things like don't bury your head to your chest when you back up, like because they hide their head and they're still to the neck, some of them. 
So those ones you're sort of going to say, well, you can't hide your head. I'm going to put my hand up and and don't bury down. And you're going to lift your hand up in the air when they try and bury down until they down. And then when you pick up a field, lift the knot of the holder up, they pick up their wither and they back up instead of going, I'm going to bury my head. And you, you, you're trying to get to their front and release when they have a change of thought and a change of movement, not just sort of a flexion. Give up lateral flexion um, on inverse south bends, then give up the lateral flexion because that lateral flexion is just him hiding from the pressure on his face. In some respects, that's what they're doing and not doing something with their mind or their body. So um, you, you have to turn flexion into balance and just through the whole horse, not just in the front of the horse, in the head. So those lessons, um, you might sort of teach him firstly, maybe do a lot of backing up because the back is a way of getting to the feet and getting the horse to back up and getting it thinking back, moving back softly, leading forward, backing up, leading forward, backing up. There'll be a lot of little repetitions. And then, and then you might start to push, in, push on the horse, push him away at the knot so he starts to bend away a little and then just move his front feet. Uh, like he's quarter over and instead of bending 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 and if he bends and gets stuck we just hang in there push back a little to move backwards and then try again till he can just move his front feet up. and you know leading him around and we're doing hind quarter heels through the feel of the knot so you can put a little twisty bend in him and and take that bend and put the inner towards towards his wither or behind his wither and he'll start to roll those hips out and all those things are really going to help him and then when you get back, treat the reins as a tool of leading and, and maybe start him in a halter again instead of a bit or something like that, just so there's a different tool that you're riding him in and lead over here, lead over here, lead backwards and get him really good at leading into the reins. And then once he's once they sort of done that, and then the other thing is um, that's the leading part of it and getting him to move through the feel until he's thinking with the feel of a rein, like he's going in the direction of the rein and it's his idea to follow the rein in opposed to the rupture of the bit or the rain or, 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 or the, what the rain presented to him. Um, the other thing is getting him to think for himself. So instead of managing him, which he probably would have had, is you'll sit there, you'll ask for energy, and you'll sit there like you're sitting there watching television. And he's going to go, what do you want? And you say, well, I want you to ask him to move. And then you'll move a bit and then you, you'll stop again and go, why well, are you sitting there like you're watching television? It's like, well, it's your responsibility to move. I'm just going to sit there and follow you. Oh, you want me moving? So because you're not there pushing him all the time, he's going to go, oh, oh right, I'm going to, I have to pay attention to this. And, and then you'll start to think. And you go, every time I stop, she asks me to start to walk. And then next thing, when he knows he has to hold his walk, he's going to be going, wonder where I'm going to go. And you go, well, you're going to have to figure that out. But, but back to that gate over there, I might just put a rein and turn you and say, let go of that. So then he says, well, actually, I don't want to keep going that gate. Now I might go somewhere else. And you'll see him start to think going. And then all of a sudden, over time, you'll just slowly bring in those boundaries, like rearranging the furniture till he's actually thinking in your direction because you're putting him in there all the time to help him you know, know where you want him to go. Um, but you've got to take all that away, bring the riverbanks back off him, let him float around and search, and then slowly you bring those riverbanks back in again later. And that'll help him start to get back on track. And then, but but by the time he starts to get to a stage that he's more accurate and following your feel and and, and going with your ideas more, um, he'll be thinking for himself, following the feel, pinning into his environment, and he'll be a happier horse that can tip his own worry out instead of build it up all the time. Okay, thank you, Mark. I'm just going to slip in another couple of questions just to get a really short answer from you if I can for each of them and uh, the first one is from Daly, um, Daylene she's got a whole herd of youngster horses 13 to 15 in a herd they've all sort of grown up there she's going to pick pluck one of those horses to start and she picked a, a young mare who is probably eight to nine years old I say young um, and wants to start working with her and, and getting her to search and obviously um, start learning some simple th some simple things but when she took her away from the herd all she got was this enormous sort of tantrum and it absolutely impossible to start learning in that reactive behavior so she's just wondering how does she set up the initial learning 
um for success when you know when obviously it's going to be really difficult to take her away from her that she's never really left before what would your answer what would your suggestions be um bring the mountain to muhammad um so take the herd to where you're going to work it uh i know uh herd is bothered then you don't want the herd to bother you when when you're working with her but um the, the you know you might be able to find a fence line that you can just work the fence line of the herd um, and then the next day you might work in the herd and when she's a bit more confident you could sort of um, just show those horses you don't want them in and just to wait I don't want you here and and, and 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 they'll just you know maybe not come into your space but maybe before that you would you know maybe get all the horses in to uh, that is close to the working area we're going to work so they're not far away so they're just over there and, um, you know, there's a horse in Germany I walked a while ago and uh, this was years and it was really like same, same sort of thing. It would go completely off, off its, off its rocker as soon as you got away from the herd a bit. And it, it was in the herd and then I worked out of the herd about 10 metres and then I worked on the other side of the gate of the herd's paddock and then I could take it away till it was out of, out of, out of um, uh, eye range, you know, vision of the other horses. So... Uh, and and it took you know it took me a while to get to that that stage in the sense that a while as in days it took me about an hour to get to that stage but um, maybe an hour and a half but the horse responded very well to that um, yeah graded exposure working close to the herd and slowly bring it away from the herd and if you're having trouble with the herd being around you all the time so and uh, and it's in the paddock but you can fence on the other side and that might help you out. Wonderful. And the next question is from Sarah. And the last one for today, she has an unbroken Andalusian mare, three and a half years old. And um, she's not sort of wanting to start her or anything, but she's just wanting to make her feel really comfortable. They've come a long way in establishing mutual respect. She literally used to run over her. Um, but they are struggling now with one particular hurdle. She squeals and tries to kick her when she touches her on the stomach, mainly that girth area. And um, whether that be with her hands, a brush, um, even her barefoot trimmer accidentally touched there, which is, um, you know, uh, not really avoidable. Um, she, and, and that was despite him being really patient and careful with her. The vet has ruled out ulcers. Um, have you got any suggestions on how she can help her feel okay being touched there? Yeah, um, training is offering an alternative. You hear me say that a lot. Um, but how I work into that position and working position. So I would actually have a tendency to um, get her to lead in. So, so in a way that she kind of leads around me, leads around me, and then I'm standing still and she just gently leads by up to my hand, not me coming in and touching. It's something I do to horses that are quite sensitive. I get them to come into the touch opposed to me going up to them and touch them. So they follow or feel safe. So an example would be I'm leading a horse around and I just gently lead it and it snips out to my hand. Instead of me walking up to the horse and putting my hand out, I uh, get it to follow or feel. So the, the reason you feel all the time, it offers a horse a pathway and alternative, which also gives you a bit more powerful distraction later on. Um, but I would also start to to feel around that area because it's a sensitive area and it's a human touching her. So another animal touching that area, she squeals. So I would um, touch her with an object at a distance to see what she's like with a dead object, like a stick or something like that, but not a stick with a rag or something, soft rag on it. But she did incline to put a little belly rope on and you just slightly just flick it over her back. You don't have to even touch it to put it on. You can just flick it over her back. And you, you have to be very quiet with, um, and you just, you know, as that rope's flipped over her back, you just walk her across a little because it's a long rope and um, and it'll just hang on the ground and you just walk her away and after you've got to pick up the rope off the ground and you'll have a rope around her belly. Um, don't tie it so you can put a restrictive pressure on it straight away. But just do it so it's the, it'll be on the outside around where the girth will go and you just can pull a little feel on it and she'll kind of wriggle a little, and then as she wriggles a little, gets a little funny, put holds a lead rope, and get her to take a step forward, let to let go of that thought, that backward thought under the pressure, and then just loosen the pressure on her belly at the same time. 
and then you could actually lead a little to that belly pressure that you've put on her and, and offer her an alternative to what she was doing just to distract her, change of thought, and maybe teach her eventually to lead to a belly rope and things like that. So you're not near her when she's doing all that and she gets used to that sensation of being guided through a belly and, and, and um, touched around the belly. Um, and then go back to sort of leading her back into your hand and you start to do a belly rope leading lesson and maybe do that over a bit of time and that might just help her out a bit um, because you won't be standing near her. She might see it as a different sort of thing and maybe do it a little, a little differently. Good luck with that, Sarah. Let us know how you go. Thank you very much for all your questions, everybody. Thank you, Mark, for your time and expertise once again. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. You can learn more from Mark online through his online training videos. Just search Mark Langley Horsemanship. There's over 380 training videos which everyone has access to with a seven-day free trial. If you like what you see, it's just $15 a month from there. That's help where you need it.